All right, uh, Jack Summers, Spokey Mountain Scientific, and today I want to tell you a little about the uh, the hardware and maybe a little demo of what we of what we got going on. Um, this is for the uh, the Weistat Pi uh, detector for um, capillary electrophoresis, right? So electrochemical detector for capillary electrophoresis. And this is the hardware that I'm talking about. It's got two different boards on it. There's actually a third board, but that's still under development, right? This is going to be, well, something like this is going to be the, uh, the power supply for the, uh, the material when doing, well, for the instrument while it's under, uh, isolated from home electronics. Anyway, I had planned to run it off of a 6 volt battery, but it turns out that my uh, voltage regulator doesn't work below 8 volts, so we're, we've got a dogs. Anyway, my, it, I've got a 12 volt battery on order, so once that comes in, I'll, I'll do a last little bit of development on that. Okay, so this is the the electronics is part of it and it comes apart into two pieces. One piece is a standard Raspberry Pi 0 2W development board. Uh, this one I, I put a little 3D printed standoff on it so that connects to my other board. Uh, the other board connects to the Pi by this uh, 40 pin header. Uh, that's on the bottom. On the top, it's got a connector for your electrodes and a couple other things that we'll talk about in just a second. Okay, so there's only one way this will go together where everything sits one on top of the other, all the pins go into a hole. That's what that is. All right, so let's call up the, the uh, board diagram. And this is right there. I guess I'm not on that, all right, am I? There we go. This right here is the, uh, what is that? that? That's the connecting block. It's a screw terminal that, that connects the, uh, the, the electrodes. Uh, for testing purposes, I have the working electrode and the ground. Uh, no, I have the reference electrode and the ground. Uh, shorted together, the ground uh, you can connect that to your uh, your your proximal electrode on your electrophoresis power supply, and the reference will obviously go to the reference electrode. Working electrode obviously goes to the to the working electrode. Don't know if that's on screen, but I have these two little alligator clips on there right now. Uh, we should, you should probably tell me what you want to have in terms of lengths of the wires and the connectors that are required to connect to the uh, apparatus, okay? All right, so the other thing I want to show you, okay, this is a top view of the board. There's where the connector to the Raspberry Pi is. Down here, just to the lower right of the terminal block, there's something that says test 01 on the board. And there are two test resistors built into the, uh, to the instrument. Okay, There's a jumper here that will connect test resistor 0. There's a jumper up here that will connect test resistor 1. I believe test, test resistor zero is like 267 kilo ohms. Tester, test uh, resistor one is 5.1 mega ohms, right? And what happens when we have these connected is that we are, we are connecting ground to the working electrode through those test resistors. Okay, so in the test mode, then you're, you have a dummy cell that is just this test resistor, and you're measuring current as a function of your applied voltage, right? 
When you are doing your electropherograms, you're going to want to uh, take that, that there's a jumper that connects these and you'll want to turn it vertical. Okay? And what that does is just bypass those test resistors. So you're measuring the current that passes through your, uh, your cell, your electrochemical cell over time. All right, so uh, let's get back to, let's go back to that one. And I will try to point out this is the tester, the test resistor, removing the jumper. Okay, there's the jumper. Uh, and putting it in the vertical position like that would be set up for running. In the horizontal position is for testing, right? And we have two different settings for different testing conditions, different orders of magnitude of. Uh, of the whatever it's called the uh, mm, mm, of the resistance okay all right so this is a uh, screenshot of the user interface one of the user interfaces I've got uh, I've got a test I got two different testing user interfaces and one for running electropherograms okay and this testing user interface is called Wi-Fi uh, wi Wi-Stat Pi test sawtooth. The gent's going to generate a sawtooth voltage pattern, and it's going to display the current as a function of time. Okay. All right. So we're connected uh, over Wi-Fi to uh, a different um, a different setup. I made two of these uh, two of these test uh, circuit boards. And I have two Raspberry Pis, and we are connected over Wi-Fi to my other one. Okay. Over here, you'll see two different voltages. We have an initial number of millivolts. We have a final number of millivolts. These numbers can be changed, right? So if you want to say 1,000 instead of 1,500, you can do that. Okay. Let's back that up and say that's 1,000 as well. All right, down here, we're going to specify the gain and everything in this little box over here has to do with the gain. This slider bar, you can move it. Uh, the higher the gain value, the more sensitive the instrument is, okay? At this 42 value of the gain, it has uh, 31 nano amps full scale, either plus or minus 31 nanoamps. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is adjust this depending on the, the amount of current that you're seeing in your experiment. Okay, so that you can use the slider. Slider kind of a, is kind of a coarse thing. Uh, I've got all these buttons up here as well. So if 37 is too sensitive, hit that bump hit that button and it drops down by a factor of 10. Now we have about a thousand nanoamps, so about one microamp. And this button will decrease sensitivity by 10 uh, decibels. This number will drop it by one decibel. Okay, so 15 going on the other side, 16, 17, 18, 28. Okay, so we have something there that we can control. We can also control the frequency that we're reading at, right? And that is uh, 20 milliseconds. So every 20 milliseconds or uh, 50 per second. We, is that right, 50 per second? Yeah, well, anyway, uh, the deal is we can control how frequently we're sampling. Uh, this button down here has a, uh, tells you whether you're going to uh, cycle infinitely or not. Okay. The reason I have this cycle button is that if you run the cycle program, it's going to continue until until your your uh, instrument runs out of battery. So once I get my battery power set up, that will be how I will test the the battery. 
Okay, and let's turn that cycle thing off for the time being. And just we'll hit the run button and see how it does. Did I hit the run button? I thought I hit the run button. What is going on here? All right, why are we not running? Run, yeah, there we go. Okay, now, as you can see, we have uh, exceeded our maximum currents and we have you know clipped our data it's clipped at the top it's clipped at the bottom so since we've clipped the data we want to change it to be less uh, less uh, less sensitive so let's run down some of those and let's hit the button again and see how it does okay we're still clipping the data but not as bad because we have more uh, or less flat area and more uh, data that's that's being recorded so let's run it a few more times and five microamps will be our max now hitting the run button okay and now we're dropping down and we we have what's looking like good sawtooth behavior All right, so that is how that works. Um, we can save the data, but I don't. I'm not set up to uh, to display that in this video. Maybe I'll do that another time. Anyway, um, anyway, that that sums up what I, what I was hoping to show you uh, in this video. So let me know if you have have comments.